morning. Today we have a review for a new company, quote unquote new company, Ro uh, Robot Paradise. Uh, quick shout out to Mike Rogers in the comment section. I, he gave me some coasters at TFCon this year. I went ahead and taped them up. Just I thought would be a nice little accent in the back. So yeah, hey, uh, Oki, I don't know how to say the rest of your name. I'm just going to say Oki. All right. So, uh, Robot Paradise, supposedly, probably related to fans' toys in some way, probably did a new brand just to kind of uh, avoid any potential problems with um, um, uh, Hasbro Takara, uh, since Soundwave is one of their more popular characters. So, uh, let's get started with packaging review. As you would expect, um, very similar packaging to Fans Toys. Like, they didn't really try very hard, like, these lines around here, kind of the grid stuff, even the embossing that they do here um, is very reminiscent of Fans Toys. Uh, even the bottom here, the warning looks exactly the same, as well as these circle stickers they use, these little cutouts, very similar. The layout on the back is very similar. You can... You can uh, read this. I haven't even read this. I don't even know if people read these bios anymore. I, I don't actually don't understand why they feel like they need to do that. But there we go. But overall, really nice artwork. Um, so you get both Acoustic Wave and I forget what his name is. Uh, Fur... Fibber? Fibber. That's right. For Frenzy is Red. Uh, Frenzy is Blue. Uh, Rumble is Red or something like that. So out of packaging... He also has a very similar... Hey, Toy Dojo. This comes courtesy of Toy Dojo. Um, he comes with the same standard uh, Fans Toys-like styrofoam coffin with the um, designation of the figure. We'll open it up. And he comes with a decent amount of stuff. He does come in robot mode, sort of. As you can see, things are already kind of really wonky. He is kind of backwards, so we'll just take him out for now. Hopefully he won't fall over in this weird form. He comes with his frenzy, or the red one. We'll just call him the red one, not to get people upset. He comes with his shoulder can, as well as his hand blaster. I forget what they call him. He comes with these two leg panels. He comes with basically a set of uh, toy pieces that you can uh, swap out or add on. Here are the kind of earthquake thingies, I forget the way to call them. Um, some of the Red One's accessories. Again, more alternate pieces. And then one Energon Cube accessory. So he does come with quite a bit. Not quite as much as uh, we got what we got with MP13 uh, Soundwave, at least in the US. But we, he did come with quite a bit. So let's see here. All right, so let's scoot down. Hey, T-Man, how's it going? Hey, Tony, how's it going? All right, so they come with all these little baggies. Oh, he also comes with instructions, obviously, and a set of um, stat cards, bio cards, whatever you want to call them. Nice 3D, nice uh, renders of these figures, bios, fibber, and uh, all that information. We're going to put that to the side. The instructions are pretty decent overall. They do skip a decent amount of steps. Like, just for example, they go from his head being out and then his head being in. They don't really tell you anything about that. So they skip a couple of key steps here. And um, I don't think the order that they do it makes a lot of sense. Um, so we'll go over that later. Let's just kind of divide, divide and conquer all these accessories. So I'm trying to divide them up into what makes sense. So here on the left are basically all the accessories you'll need to switch them into Toy Deco. Uh, and you can mix and match as you'd like. I'll, I'll kind of talk to you guys about all of these individually, but they're like shin pieces here, knee pieces, these red ones. I don't even know if you guys are seeing this right now. Shoulder pieces here, out, outer leg pieces here, and then of course the face. And then lastly, the chest Deco. All right, so those are all the alternate pieces. In here, we have two alternate heads, complete heads for the red guy and his guns. And I think that's it. So with all these baggies out of the way, let's get going. Hey, Baker Jen, how's it going? Wild Bill. All right. Uh, Brian, 
Buddha, great to see you guys. All right, Evil Ash, how's it going? Okie. All right, so let's see here. Uh, first thing we'll do is actually, actually, T-Man, sorry to say, we're going to do accessories last. So we're going to put these over there. We're going to actually first worry about... We're going to first worry about... A sound wave, acoustic wave himself. So, out of packaging, you think that he's kind of in robot mode and that it's kind of an easy... Oh, just switch the waist around, but that's actually not the case. At least with mine, there are a lot, a number of things that they didn't do correctly to get him into robot mode. So to get into, ro I want to get him into robot mode as he should be, because I also know a lot of people, um, more than I would expect, say that they just open up their fan stories figures and never transform it. Um, so I want to at least get you guys to the proper robot mode. So first things first, this is how mine came. The backpack is wrong. First thing we'll do is actually open up this piece and untab it here to flip this up. We want to get this piece up and in like so. Leave this up because we're going to deal with the waist. So we're going to rotate the waist around. The butt panel on mine was also not correct. So you want to flip this down and you want to get it. It's uh, kind of hard to see, but there is kind of like an octagon shape here. You want to get it. So this is basically in line. These two planes are in line. This one here and this one here. I would hold on to this section here. You want to rotate it 180 degrees. And then you want to flip this up. So this is the proper butt plate. Like so. All right. Um, also, if your guy has a little, the wobbles this way, it's not articulation. It's not properly transformed. That's what's causing this. So come up underneath his crotch. He has a little tab that <laughs> kind of hangs down. Like, well, well, we just won't say anything about that. You want to lift this up. And what's causing this is that it actually has... Uh, it might be easier to see on the back, maybe. Okay, so yeah. Over here, you'll see that there's actually a sliding joint. You want to lift it all the way up. And then there's some die cast pieces here. This guy does have a, a decent amount of die cast. You want to pull these panels down on either side and tab that in. This will secure the uh, waist so there's no side to side. I guess if you want to leave that down, you can, um, but that's not the proper way and you risk it kind of collapsing down. So I wouldn't do that. Go ahead and plug his butt plate back in. Or I, I guess it doesn't really plug in, just folds up like so. Come back to the front, bring the crotch down, and tab that back in. Now we can go ahead and fold this down, fold this closed. Uh, the other thing that, at least on mine, coming in here, uh, this white panel isn't correct. That should actually be folded in. You want to pull this all the way out like so. Pull to the side, flip this in, close it up, and then close this back up. This tab's kind of in where the die cast leg piece is. You want to do it correctly so it's flush here. Same thing on this side. Pull this down. Open this up. You got You want to make sure you have this all the way down. That gives you the clearance to go ahead and open this up sideways like that. Like so. And with that... Oh, and lastly, I, I didn't I didn't untab these, but lastly, these shoulder pieces, at least on my copy, neither of them were in. They were just kind of flopping about like this. Uh, we'll talk about when we go to transformation, but the key for me is that it actually has a tab, kind of a ridge coming forward, and it's on double hinges. You want to, I think it's easiest to get the double hinges, the front tabbed in like this first, so it's angled, and then apply pressure. So it tabs backwards like that. It is a very hardy tab, um, so just be careful with that. But at least on my figure, those are all the things that were wrong with it or incorrect to get him into robot mode. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and actually transform his accessories really quick. All right, so he has one shoulder cannon, which I don't like the hinge here. Um, there's really no easy way to get this out. Uh, the, the easiest way to get it out really is 
Well, first we'll extend the back, which is loose. I wish there was some kind of locking mechanism here, but another complaint, minor complaint. Just go ahead and plug this in as much as you can. And then once it, once it is pegged in, you can go ahead and lift this up like that. And then you can see there is some articulation here. All right, so there's his shoulder cannon. Uh, okay, so there's a lot of people laughing, TM. All right. 2023? <laughs> Talking about some, some release figures? All right. So we'll just keep going because I don't want to spend too much time looking at the, the comments just yet, even when we haven't even gotten all the way into robot mode. So we want to go ahead and expand this piece, pull out the tab, very reminiscent of the um, official MP13. And then once you do that, this little tip piece kind of comes out Again, in similar fashion to MP13. And then you can tab the gun into either hand. It has a nice tabbing mechanism. These fingers and hands are the best probably that we've gotten from fans' toys. I probably won't say the best ever from a Masterpiece figure, but it is definitely the best, I think, from uh, a fans' toys figure. Which is great, because they've been using like the same hands forever. All right. So with that, we have Acoustic Wave in robot mode finally with his accessories um let's do a quick 360 of him first and then we'll do some quick comparisons as you can see he looks really fantastic um i was actually worried about the blue color that they had uh it looked a little bit too light for me but after having him in hand uh, i think the blue is really spectacular looking there's a lot a lot of nice die casts his legs i think are thighs are mostly die cast he has some die cast on these toes, um, probably more. My hands are already cold, so uh, it's hard for me to tell. These pieces here are obviously die cast. There are some die casts there. We saw on the inner workings, his joints are die cast and at the elbows. This piece here, which obviously opens. This little mechanism here, which you lift up, which is a weird way to do it, which ex pushes the tape out. Um, some of those pieces are die cast. So a lot of die cast on this guy. Very, very hefty. Very nice. Uh, something that I usually do and I forgot to do with some of my latest reviews is actually weigh it for you guys. Let's go ahead and weigh him with his guns really quickly. And he is uh, 1 pound, 7.5 ounces, or uh, where is it? So, oh, ominously 666 grams. So, there we go there. Uh, before we get too much further, I'll go ahead and do some quick comparisons. Here he is with MP13. You can see he does stand a decent amount taller. Probably about uh, half a head or so, maybe a little bit less. Um, in terms of overall size, you can see he looks a little bit more bulky. He looks a lot more cartoony with the white thighs as opposed to the silver pieces and so forth. Um, but proportionally, I think he looks really good. Less details, but again, with the extra pieces that we're talking about later, you'll see that he does get a lot of nice details. Um, TM Reviews also did a more detailed comparison between these two. I think he just posted that today or yesterday. So make sure to take a look at that. I'm not going to go through a whole lot of comparisons on the details. But yes, a very, very nice upgrade, especially in robot mode for this guy. All right, let's move him out of the way. Uh, a couple other comparisons. I'm actually, I actually prepared a lot of comparisons for this guy, just because I know you guys love comparisons and making me do all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, here he is with um, X-Transbot's Blaster. I forget what they call him. But these guys actually look pretty nice together. They both have kind of metallic finishes. Oh! That wasn't meant to happen. But you can see how they compare. I think they still work well together until Fan Toys releases their Blaster. Who else do we have? Of course... MP44, I always have him. He's slightly taller than Acoustic Wave. A lot of people ask me why I only do, even with Decepticons, I only do a comparison with Optimus. One, because uh, he is kind of the standard setting um, 
size for MPs. Secondly, he's the one that I keep on my desk because he's actually not my masterpiece optimist of choice on my display. That is a uh, transform element. That's my uh, masterpiece prime that's with my other Autobots. So that's why, yeah, this guy's always within arm's reach. Here he is with Medicus just because I have him. Uh, I thought I brought some other figures. Maybe I didn't, but you get the idea. Oh, I guess just for a comparison with another tape bot. Here he is with Steel Jaw, Ocular Max's Steel Jaw. I, li I like this size, but obviously it doesn't scale in alt mode. So that's a lot of comparisons. I'm not doing MP36. All right. Oh, hey, Kato's. Apparently, Kato's came in. TFN. Uh, Mike, I saw you earlier. Daniel. Uh, okay, I think I, I caught most of you. All right, so that's most of him in, in robot mode just for looks. Um, I did want to go into articulation, but before I did that, I wanted to show off the fibrer. Fibber. Fibber. So here he comes in a little translucent, kind of cloudy case. He is very similar in size uh, to uh, the official tapes, which are the same as the micro, micro cassettes. Um, they aren't exactly the same. You'll notice actually that the holes on this are not aligned. I don't actually know which one's more accurate. I think these are more accurate, but these will not fit in this case and vice versa. So one of them is not actually completely accurate. but that'll give you an idea of how they work in terms of size. Uh, you can fit him in the chest and vice versa by pressing this die cast piece down. Looks like you're gonna be able to fit two in here. Uh, one thing to note is that it has a little gray tab in here, so you kind of want to load it from the side so that this piece depresses, is spring-loaded, allows you to get one really far back. And let me see if I can get this one in real quick. And here's an official one. Uh, I haven't tried this, so it should work though. I did I did put, well, maybe not. Uh, I don't know, it seems like a tight fit, so I don't know. I thought I tried it earlier and it worked, but we can actually see how this mechanism works. If you have one stored in the back, go ahead and lift this piece and you can see how it ejects it at an angle, which is pretty cool. All right, what else do we have here? Uh, since we're already here, let's actually get him in robot mode just to compare him. Megatron comparison or thumbs down. Thanks for the $2, T-Man. Uh, uh, maybe later. All right, so let's get this guy transformed really quickly just because I want him in robot mode at some point as well. So he's pretty easy. First thing you want to do is just bring down the legs. They come in here at hinges. Here is a little tricky. So you, you kind of want to think that you just pull straight down on uh, this hinge, but it's actually a series of hinges. So you don't want to do that. You kind of want to work this out. It's probably easier to see on this side. You want to work it out of the slot. Okay, so don't just pull straight down. You kind of want to pull outward. Oop, came off the mushroom peg. Come on. Now I said it was easy, but now I can't get it. There we go. So see, you're on double hinges here. You want to bring this down like so. The heels will come out. It's a little bit easier, maybe if you have a spudger. I recently cut my fingernails, so let me grab a spudger real quick. Get in here, get the heels out, and the toe also extends like that. Once you have that done, kind of like the official MP, you want to extend the body. This one has not just the little extension for the ads, but it actually hides in the entire hip section. Coming up top, we're just gonna extend the arms all the way down, like so. The shoulders here. 
the fist are kind of hidden like so. You want to bring this down on that double hinge. Oh, hey, Paul. Just say no to Megatron. So the $2 overrides T-Man's... Uh, the $4 overrides T-Man's request for $2. So looks like uh, no Megatron comparison wins. At least for now. All right. But thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate it. Appreciate all the generosity, even though it's wholly not necessary. And with that, we have him in robot mode. All right. Uh, Accessory-wise, he has two sets of heads. And again, sorry for the lighting. and You can kind of see a little bit better here. But he has a straight face out of the box, a very happy face. Happy grin. And then kind of a grrr angry face here. Yeah, the shoulders on this are whack. I'm not going to lie. When I first... I never... I wasn't really keeping up with the updates on this. And I didn't really notice the shoulders at first. But yeah, these shoulders are whack for sure. Um, his guns come out like this. And for some reason, they decided to paint the main part of it. And then um, have maybe plated. I think this is plated. I think this is die cast. I don't know why they decided to mix and match this. But they did. So that's the thing. These will tab in to the back like that. You can use both of those. Or, because it has a small peg, kind of like a small half peg, you can use that and peg it in like a gun. Very weird choice. But it's a choice, I guess. So here we go with Rumble. Or, sorry, Frenzy. Or whatever, the red one. Fibber. Fibber. So here he is. Uh, I should do some comparisons with him. Where did he go? Uh, oh, dang it. I have him in tape mode. So let me give me a second. We'll bring him down. For some reason, uh, I forgot to actually do the comparison with him in tape mode. So we'll get to him eventually. But I did with, uh, what's it called? With um, Buzzsaw. So you get the idea, at least in terms of scale. I don't think you guys need to see just the colors. Getting him transformed very quickly. Just so we can do a comparison. So design-wise, they aren't all that different in terms of um, transformation. They did share a lot of this uh, design. But you can see just how different they are in terms of size. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep this guy standing up. All right. Uh, just to make it a little bit easier to see, this angle is not that great. So let's get scooched down here. So you can see just how much taller he is. A decent amount taller. So I do appreciate that. I always thought the tapes were small on that official masterpiece. So there you have it. There's a comparison. And then, oh, sorry. I did, like I said, I am actually going out of my way today to do a ton of comparisons. I prepped a lot. So here he is with the Ocular Max um, red one. So, let me scooch back down really quick. So, hopefully this gives you an idea of all the different options you have with the tapes. So, Official MP, Acoustic Wave, Fibrer, and Ocular Max's version. I still like this the best in terms of overall robot mode size, but we can't get this down too. Something that could fit in there. All right, so let me get rid of all of these. All that, and we still haven't gotten... We still haven't gotten to um, articulation. Since we're already in with Fibber, let's go ahead and talk about his articulation. So his head is on a mus mushroom peg, which can be used to swap out the heads. We'll show that off probably later. His shoulders are on a pin joint here, or a hinge. 
Oh, sorry, it's not a pin joint, it's a screw. Uh, he does have a shoulder joint, so you can actually extend this shoulder joint out like that to give you a little bit more freedom, but then obviously it looks really goofy. It's supposed to stay collapsed, but if you need it for articulation, you do need to extend it out a little bit. He has this weird hinge here for transformation, really, but I guess you can use it. Uh, no bicep swivel. Uh, and it's actually double double jointed. Sorry, like that. He does have an elbow joint, which goes a little bit further than 90 degrees. And then he has this kind of wrist thingy. Again, more for transformation than anything else. His waist, he doesn't have any kind of articulation here, really, other than the collapsing feature, which, again, not really articulation. His hips are really nice, though. His hips can go up and back. And it's in that kind of uh, interesting design where the whole hip, not just the legs, leg joints come out. The legs can go out to the side. And it's on a mushroom, mushroom peg, so it can go all the way around. He does have those double jointed knees, so it can go all the way back like that. His feet where he probably has the most articulation, so it's a ball peg going up into the leg itself. So he gets a good amount of range. He has a hinge at the top and then a hinge for the heel. So a lot of good articulation. His toes are die cast. Um, and I want to say that these are die cast too. Yeah, I think his whole lower legs are die cast from what I can feel. So even, even with this a size this small, they were able to put in die cast. That really helps with the stability, obviously, of being able to keep this guy well planted. So he's very, very stable. That's probably the part I like best about him. All right, let's put him off to the side. Let's go into articulation for the big guy. All right, I can't believe we're 27 minutes in and that's it. All right. So let's see here. Uh, articulation wise, his head is on a swivel and on a hinge, so he can look up a decent amount. Uh, he can't really look down at all. Like, the lowest is kind of straight, basically. His gun is on that post, so he can rotate, and then it has a hinge here. Actually, it has a double hinge that, again, I find annoying to deal with. His shoulders are nice and ratcheted. Like so, ratcheted out going to the side. I'm going to get rid of his gun real quick. You can do kind of like the pec deck. He has a bicep swivel. He has a single jointed elbow, but it goes all the way up like this, so very nice. His wrist is on, you can see a ball peg. So he gets a decent amount of range, so he can actually fold up like this. I don't, I don't know why you might want to do that, but you can do that. And I, when I said he does have the best um, fans toys hands, or I guess robot paradise hands, uh, it has a lot. So it has a ball peg for a thumb, so you can rotate the thumb all the way around as a hinge or pin joint at the base of the thumb. And then finger-wise, they're all individually articulated. They all have one pin going at the base, another one at uh, the first joint. And then the pointer finger actually has another one at the very tip, so you won't have like the witchy crook finger thing going on with his pointer finger. You can actually point straight. Uh, the one thing that bothers me that I don't know if I'm the only one that will be bothered by this is that uh, his fingers are different lengths, which I like, but his pointer finger is longer than the rest. Even if you curve it, it's longer. I mean, that just seems weird to me. The middle finger at least should be the longest, but he's a robot, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Why, why would he have human anatomy? All right. Um, if you undo his uh, shoulder pieces here, I guess you can use butterfly joints. That's not really articulation, though, so we're not going to count that. He does have a nice, well, not uh, a decent, I guess, or it's something. It's better than nothing. Uh, torso crunch or ab crunch. I guess you can call it ab crunch. It's right here. You can see the rounded hinge there. It doesn't go that far. Um, it would have been nice if it could, could go. I guess maybe it 
goes a little bit back. I don't think it does. I think it basically just goes forward, which is uh, kind of a bummer. All right, what else do we got here? Waist, uh, he does have a waist swivel. Um, technically, it could go 180 degrees, but it runs into his backpack. So to get out of that way, you actually would have to not just untie the backpack. Because of the way it's designed, you actually have to undo this section first. Otherwise, you might risk damaging it. Um, you can make use of the ab crunch a little bit to get a little bit more, but you get about 45 degrees. I think that's decent. It's fair enough. He has hip skirts that come to the front and to the side. So you can go up nice and ratcheted. To the side. It's, all, it's just friction to the side. And then I thought he had a, a thigh swivel with this cut here. Uh, while he technically does, it's not for this mode. You, it's locked into place. You actually have that hidden thigh here, which I always like this design much better instead of breaking up a rectangular leg thigh. His butt plate, we kind of talked about, is hinged at the at the top here, not at the not really at the bottom, although you can spread this out just a little bit so you can get a little bit more room. Like so. Knees, he has nice deep knee bend. Like so. It is ratcheted. I do think it's a little gappy looking. You can see my fingers through here once you start bending it. Oh, one quick thing here. It bothered me to no end. Um, these pieces here, uh, these metal pieces here, mine were crooked. You can actually go in from the back and there's screws here, two small screws. You can loosen those up to straighten them out and then um, lock them back into place so that they're actually straight. Mine were crooked out of the box. So that's the first thing I looked into. I don't know why, but I'm kind of OCD like that. All right, coming down to the lower leg, we're still working on articulation. So his foot, his entire foot here, this kind of centerpiece, as well as a toe, is on a hinge, as well as a hinge this way. So he does get a little bit forward and very little back. I guess it's better than nothing. And then his toe, for some reason, can bend like this. I, I, it's not for transformation or anything. Um, I don't know why he has it, but he has it. And this is die cast. And like I said, a lot of his lower section is die cast. His thighs. And I think this part here is die cast. So he has a ton of die cast, which is why he weighs like one pound, seven ounces or whatever. So I think with all that, we got um, all the articulation covered for this guy. And only... 33 minutes. All right. So, um, we already talked about articulation. I guess we can talk about his accessories really quick before we transform him. To do that, you kind of got to get him back into his, his alt mode form. You fold up his arms like this. The only difference is you want to extend these pieces, rotate it around like so. And I'm only going to show one side just because why waste the time? But for this, this is one of the cool features. So these, um, I forget what they call these. These, uh, what, are, what are these good things called? Anyway, the way they work is they're spring-loaded. You just want to press down on this lower section here. And they come out. And they're nice and strong springs. Pile drivers, thank you. I'm not such an idiot. Thank you. Like 28 people now come in and tell me that they're pile drivers. I can't think of it. I can't think of it. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. So, but yeah, it's really cool. You can also flick this back into place so it's nice and smooth. And then if you want to lock it back into place, just close it up and then push on the top. But very much like the MP design, all you do is just jam this in once you curl up the hands. And that's it. Uh, you can rotate them around. Again, because you're extending on that joint here, you get a lot more articulation by extending that. But I like this spring-loaded mechanism. It's very cool. I dig it. All right. All right, let's just go ahead and finish off his transformation since we already did it. Flip the head around, get this closed up, get this fist in like that. Use the double hinge to get the arms up. Rotate this up like so. No, no. Actually, don't. You want to get these down. Collapse the shoulder joint. 
rotate this all the way up and down like that. All right, like so. Just get them evened out. The uh, upper body, hips kind of section, you want to collapse all the way in. You want to rotate the thighs inward. You want to get the heels folded up. And then the toes, the feet, you want to rock back on that ball peg and use that hinge so that they kind of sit inside here. On the other side, you'll see them peek out, but you'll know you did it right if that they basically are flush with this piece here. All right, so this section, remember how we had those double hinges? This hinge has to go into this section here. So you kind of want to lift it up like this and then press in at a 90 degree angle to get them in like that. So again, once again, lift it up, pull this back, and then press in at 90 degrees. One last thing before we finish off, you can actually store these weapons in his uh, alt mode. So, you know, the official ones stored their guns inside the pile drivers, like this. These don't do that. These fold up. So, you fold in the tip of the gun, fold up this uh, fin piece, whatever you want to call it. And then you got to make sure you're doing it in the correct orientation. So, you can't just put either of these in either section. You need to correctly place them. So, you'll see that there is. On the front side, on the back side of the chest, there's a little notch cut out. You need to have it oriented so that uh, this fin piece will align when it goes in. So you want to put it in, uh, if I'm not mistaken, like so. And then you'll see this fin piece go in this section. If you do it the other way, you're going to damage your figure. Um, they have like a weird caution, misspelled caution in the instructions but they don't really tell you what that caution, cautionary note is about. So again, you want to fold it so the back of the gun is towards the thigh, and so that this little fin piece is facing the front, not the back. So this fin piece here that you fold up has to face the front. And you just fold this up like so. All right, so he's done. Uh, I don't, nothing really, tabs here you just kind of push it in place and the friction jo frictionary joints uh frictionary frictionary is not a word is it a friction joints are what keeps it held into place all right finally we're going to go into transformation for um acoustic wave we'll go ahead and take this gun out just going to push in like so close this up with this gun i'm going to push this in Close up the handle. Uh, make sure you push this in all the way. And then collapse the back section. So now you have two batteries. And they will store in the back. So let's uh, let's actually deal with... There's a couple things that I'm going to tell you to do first. Um, because it just makes sense to me. Uh, there's a lot of interference with the uh, backpack. This section here. Like I told you, the 180 degree or 360 degree waist joint can't really be utilized with that in place. And there's a, a bunch of things that you need to take care of in terms of the waist. So let's actually pull up on this. Ow. You got to pull up on this. It has a little tab here. It hurts like heck. And then untab the backpack. While we're here, we'll just flip this down. This piece will leave up like that. Uh, we can go ahead and store the batteries in here. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's store the head. The store head... Rotates back on a platform all the way down like so. Store the batteries in. I don't think there's a right or wrong orientation. I think they can go up or down. Don't think it matters. Uh, but we don't want to close. Oh, actually, let's just leave it like that. I don't want to close it all the way because if you close it all the way, again, you can't articulate here. So, uh, like I said, I do want to take care of the waist first because um, the rotation of that gets interfered by this. So... Let's rotate 180 degrees at the waist here. Then we're going to deal with the butt flaps. We'll lift this like so. And come to the crotch. Open this. Undo this. So once you have all that done, you need to rotate at this lower joint here. 
So not the waist joint, but this lower crotch joint. It kind of reminds me of a transform element. It had something similar to this, like so. All right. With that, um, you're going to be able to collapse the waist joint. Uh, the one thing I don't like about the waist joint is that this die cast piece, when you collapse it in, it does often scratch his abdomen area. So just be careful about that. So I just want to take care of this first. Then get rid of everything. Oh, no, sorry. The, the one piece that you need to do that I told you about earlier, you have to flip these die cast pieces up first before you can collapse, obviously, the, the crotch. Uh, that's That was the whole point of the first part of this review. So just be careful when you collapse this down. Um, you don't want to scratch this section, but eventually, uh, mine is already showing after only like two transformations. So I don't think there's really any way around it. Just be careful when you do so. All right, like that. Now once that's all down, you can go ahead and close this up and close this crotch piece again. We'll go ahead and fold these hip skirts all the way up. This piece that we rotated, we're gonna rotate back. Again, I suggest holding this because this piece is very thin. You can see it flexing because it has holes here too. So I would suggest holding it when you rotate this section. All right, so since we're here, let's fold down these white flaps. And then these will open up. Like so. All right, so that's all I wanna do for now. You can actually even close this up. That's all I wanna do for now when it comes to the midsection, but I wanna get that out of the way just so now that we can actually close this up and not, ha not have to worry about opening it up or running into anything now. The rest of the upper body is very easy, the arms, you basically just want to flip like this, open up. Oh, sorry, you want to actually get the uh, back of the fist here so that when it closes up, it goes like so. Tab that back in. Coming to the shoulder, remember because the tab is facing forward, when we lock, unlock it, we want to go the opposite direction. So you want to kind of pull forward like this to release the tab. And then we can come back. Get the arm straight down like this. Make use of the double joints here. And then you have a big peg that will go into basically this section here. So push forward while simultaneously closing it. And then you have another tab here, which will go, which will go there. While we're here, go ahead and flip this shoulder piece up. Same thing on this side. Open this up. Flip this around. Close this back up. Shoulder joint, don't pull at the arm, pull at the actual panel itself. So pull at the panel. Get these double joints out and back, collapse, peg the shoulder, tab the forearm, bring this up. All right, upper body pretty much done. The last thing which I should have done before is you can flip this down this little peg that held in the um, the shoulder cannon. Now we're getting to the lower leg. Uh, I'm gonna go out of order from the directions again because I don't think they make a lot of sense. So we'll, first thing we'll do is go ahead and deal with the knees. So you wanna flip this up. Remember, remember we need to pull this all the way forward so we can open this and get this white panel out. We can close that back up. I actually tried to leave it a little bit open. It's really hard to do so, and I'll show you why later. Close this up like that, and then flip this up. So it looks like this as opposed to this. From here, we're gonna lift up on this panel piece, extend this all the way out. You have a little panel in here that's hiding. Flip this open. When you extend this, and tab it in here, there's also a small tab that goes up here. So make sure it's rotated the correct way. So it tabs in there. 
the lower body or the lower leg, we want to untab at this block here. It's going to untab, has a double joint, rotate like so. This is also very reminiscent of MP13. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff that's very reminiscent. I don't know if this is just because, you know, they had a design for Acoustic Wade a long time ago and they saw what MP13 did when they canceled it and then revised it. But a lot of elements are definitely taken from MP13. All right. So from here. Oh, I scratched the thigh here somehow. My paint's chipped. Bummer. Anyway, come in to the back here. We want to unlock that hidden thigh swivel piece. You want to lift this up. Oh, actually, no. You want to rotate first. You want to rotate outwards. And then lift this up. And you'll kind of see how this all works. This kind of goes in like this. But the reason why I said to keep this open is because you want to get this crotch kind of tabby thing up and in like that. There's a series of tabs here. One there. One there. You can tab in this section here at the foot. Come up to here. Pull this down, and then this entire panel will open up. Now, this is on a double hinge, but also on a slider. So you want to extend this out. Be careful to do that just because it will make uh, clearancing this a lot easier. Fold that down, collapse it, and then tab that in. Finally, we can just close this up. Like so. This little flat piece will kind of go in behind the arm. And that's how we get that done. We'll just go ahead and flip this butt flat piece in like so. Same thing on the other side now. All right, so bring down the knee. Open this up. Open this section. Close it back up as much as you can or while still trying to keep it open. But again, you'll, you'll mess with it to try to get that clearance here. I didn't actually finish this yet. All right. This leg panel, open this up. Uh, all of the tabs are pretty nicely toleranced so that you're not getting a lot of looseness. The only section that's pretty loose is here. Remember to come in here and get this little flat piece out. Coming down to the foot, break his ankle, bring it around, rotate, bring it up like so. Open this tab on the back, rotate the thigh outwards 90 degrees, and then bend at the knee while coming up. Just be mindful to get this underneath here. Like so. Tabs all around. You can see this white one here. Bring this down. This panel will open up again. Like so. This whole section. A spudger definitely is your friend with this figure, for sure. Like so. Once again, this is on a slider, so extend this out to prevent any damage to your figure. Get it all the way around. Then collapse it, tab that in, and then flip this up and closed. Get this in right behind this little notch here. Uh, with these die cast pieces, you can close them up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But with that, we finally have Acoustic Wave in his alt mode. Whew. So that was a lot of work. 
Um, so I'm not going to lie. So I actually do have a second MP sound wave. Usually on these live streams, I can't do a comparison. Uh, but this is actually my son's, which is why it's all messed up everywhere. All the paint and everything's all scratched up. Um, but I actually have one. So luckily, I can do a quick comparison of his alt mode too. I usually can't do that. But here you go. Um, I'm definitely going to say that as far as a more fun figure, transforming figure, this original MP13 is a way better figure. Uh, it's I haven't transformed this in literally years, and I was able to do that very easily um, without from memory. And it was a lot more intuitive, um, a lot less messy. It had a lot less going on. And honestly, I think it looks better. I think it has a better alt mode look to it. It has more functionality. It has some play buttons here that that actually work. It has that little light here. Um, even the mechanism for launching and opening the tapes, I think, is better. I don't know why they chose to do this thing. But this mechanism works much better and hides much better. So I don't know that the extra complexity is at all worth, worth it. Even if you look at the sides, if you want the tune look, I guess this is a little bit cleaner in terms of tune aesthetics because there's no um, ports or anything. But I actually like the ports. So you have ports here on this side. It does have the same, I forget whatever, whatever this thing is, but it does have that functionality here. So that's one thing they kept. Same thing on this side, they have this little rotation piece like here. But again, you have all these other ports and everything like that. And if you remember, they even have this little connector piece, uh, which I didn't bring out. But yeah, overall, um, this is a much more enjoyable figure, and especially to transform. Oh, sorry, I forgot to... There are tabs here. I always forget these, but you can try to get them to secure. I don't think it works that well. And again, that's another aspect of this design. This little crotch piece that they did here, which was much more elegant. Like, and it just slides up in place. No kind of waviness going on here, trying to get this over under tab on this thin piece of plastic. So, um, no playable buttons here. So yeah, overall, I actually enjoy MP13 better as a figure, but uh, as a transforming figure toy, but this guy is definitely a lot nicer in terms of quality, build, paint, materials, uh, everything else you can name, really, this looks a lot better. Um, but as an actual figure itself in the engineering, I actually think MP13 still stands up really, really well, even in comparison to this one. All right, just for functionality shake, we can go ahead and show this off again. I think I showed it off before. I don't know if this one has to be in a certain orientation, but I find that it works better if you put it in that way. Uh, we can do this with Buzzsaw 2. Same functionality there. Uh, is there anything else I can show you guys in this mode? Oh, uh, this can use be used in both modes, but this Energon Cube thing is very similar to what we got with the MP13. Just undo the lid. Ow. And you can start making Energon Cubes. It does tab in. Wait, oh, sorry, I didn't have had the open side facing the wrong way. It does tab in around his frame. Like so. So he can do it in this mode or in or in robot mode. It usually holds on a little bit better. All right, there we go. And in this one, you actually have to take off. If I if I remember correctly, you actually have to take off. Oh, no, you don't. Okay, there we go. That's for um, twin cast with his double chest. So he has that same kind of functionality there. All right, is there anything else to talk about in alt mode? I don't have really any other ancient audio um, audio uh, equipment to display against him. Oh, light pole mode. I forgot the light pole mode. Uh, I guess when we go back, I can try to do the light pole mode. I don't even know what it would look like. Uh, I would just be making it up. All right. We can try to do light pole mode, though. I, I vaguely remember what it looks like, and I would just be guessing. But we can try something like that. All right, let's go ahead and go back into robot mode. We'll also do the accessories at that time, just so you guys can see how all that works. 
All right, ready? First thing we'll do is untab a bunch of pieces. Uh, I like taking care of this first, these up here. Uh, the downside is, again, these are very, very difficult to get open. So I'm using my tool, lift this up, pull this down, pull this down. We can get the butt flap down as well. We can undo these tabs if you were able to actually secure them. And then from here, we're just gonna start um, disassembling stuff. So we can go ahead and pull out, again, extending this double hinge, rotating this around, tabbing here, flipping this closed. Uh, one thing that happens a lot is when you pull this down, the, re the swappable shin pieces often get, stayed, uh, get stuck here. So I'm guessing 90% sure that it's gonna get stuck. So again, you wanna just basically undo the, oh no. Oh yeah, it did, see, yeah. I, th I thought it didn't get stuck, but it did. So you can just tab that back on. Bring this all the way down. If you make sure that this tab is open so you can rotate this the correct way, close that up. And now we're gonna start working on the leg. So go ahead and flip this panel in, get this leg unpegged here, rotated, tabbed in at the bottom of the foot or bottom of the leg. This will come undone at the top and here. Rotate that around, collapse it on itself, tabbed into the side. You want to open up this section. Open this up, close it in, and then right on the diecast piece, you can see that there's a little tab and slot there. There we go. Um, I'm trying to think how we're going to get the light pull mode. Uh, we'll just keep going for now. Same thing on this side. Open this up. Flip this down. Uh, untab these. Oh, this one actually stayed in. All right, cool. Bring this down. Make sure that the tab is opened. Rotate at the thigh. 90 degrees. Close that back up. Oh, I forgot to do this, but we can do this now too. Undo this tab, get this back and around. This closes up, tabs in, foot down and around, tabbed in. Untab this section here, close in this flap before collapsing it all into itself. All right, uh, coming to the knee, open this up. Flip this out, flip the white piece in, close it up, tab in the knee. Uh, I guess we're kind of already near the light pole mode. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know what would be the best way to do it, but let's just... Um... Where's feet on the light pole mode? Where's feet like facing outwards? Maybe that, maybe we should keep this open like this and then do it like this maybe. Light pole mode. I don't know. We'll just go, we'll just do like this for now. And again, we're not going to try to actually get a real mode out of this. We're just going to do this for fun really quick. Again, when you're tabbing this in, get this front section in first and then push on the back. Untab this. Get the front section in first. Push in. And I guess we can go like this. Uh, to make use of the ab crunch, we do actually have to extend the waist though. So I guess we should lift this up. Oh, now we get we got to get this out of the way. Lift this section. Undo the crotch. 
So now we're going just like way out of order, uh, out of the way that I would normally transform him back into robot mode. But for the sake of light pole mode, we'll do it. This should be extending upwards. There we go. So when you get extended all the way upwards, remember to go ahead and pull these metal tabs down to lock it into place. Um, I'm trying to think. How should we do this? What way makes the most sense to make it into light pole mode? Let's go like this and then rotate at the waist. Maybe keep these up. Tab in the crotch and this flap here. Uh, close this up. And then maybe this is the best way to do light pull mode like that I don't know this this is probably close enough you can do your own fan mode to see how this works but that's a good enough idea for for a one scene one episode mode so let's just get the legs realigned the correct way to get them into robot mode we're almost there this weird detour I don't know how you guys convinced me to do this to ruin my transformation sequence just to show you guys that mode. All right, get these hip flaps down from the side. Open up this panel. Get the head out. If you can manage it, there we go. Get this piece flipped all the way in like that. that tabbed in. His forearms open up, get the fist out, tab that in, rotate the fist. Same thing here. And with that, we're back in robot mode via a kind of weird detour to get into light pole mode. All right, so that's really it for transformation uh, with, a, again, a few little detours. I did want to very quickly, because we're already over an hour, try to show you all the different accessories that you can make, make use of. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at everything. Here's his head. Let's scooch down a little bit. All right, here are his shoulder pieces. His leg pieces. More, oh, these are knee pieces. These are kind of knee pieces. Shin pieces here. And the chest piece. All right, so hopefully you can see that. We'll do these one at a time. The head is honestly probably the one that um, is the most difficult. It's very tabbed in very, very hard. You can see how the shape works. Um, you basically just need to come in and pull. I usually come in from the side. I don't even know if I'll be able to do this. I meant to actually not tab it in very hard just so I could get into this. All right, well, let's let's come back to that real quick. Uh, the one thing that people have asked a lot and I had asked, uh, I even asked Deluxe Baldwin because he ended up doing it. And I know Team in, uh, TM was having a difficult time. Uh, the way the chest works is that it's just very, very tight. And the way it tabs in, it actually slots in at the bottom. You need to push in at the top of this window pane first, and it's in there very tightly. I recommend going in one corner at a time and just gently pushing and then going to the other corner and you'll see it come up like this. Once it's like this, you can pull it upwards because it is done kind of an over under slot. So, and then you can't just throw it in any which way. There is a specific front and back, so you want to have these the ridges. You basically have it oriented this way, so you'll have the detail on the top left here, and it should be you should be able to feel it. That it should be textured on this side, not on the other side. So when you slot it in, you'll see that in the gold section here, there are two slots. So you want to slot it in like so. But yeah, shout out to Deluxe Baldwin. Um, I was trying to figure it out at the same time I asked him, and he he said he used a, a screwdriver. You don't really need a screwdriver, but you do need a little bit of patience. 
and a little bit of will because it it is kind of scary. And then you just push in from one corner at a time. That's how you get the chest done. All right. Shoulder wise, uh, I think it's easiest to go ahead and lift the shoulder piece up so you have something to grab onto. Just be very careful. There's also a little notch here, but you want to pull forward to release it. The vent detail is actually molded in the, the actual shoulder piece. And then um, it's see-through here with this gap. I thought that was kind of a nice detail. All right, same thing here. Just be very careful. Like I said, everything is nicely tabbed together. It is nicely tolerant, but maybe a little bit on the too tight side. All right, so we got those done. Um, leg pieces. So first thing we'll do is open this and open the knee. These pieces come out. Uh, these are same, similar um, pieces, so you can put them on either way, on, on either knee. Same thing here. Let's open this up. Get this out. And I believe the arrows are supposed to be pointing down. I think the arrows are also supposed to be yellow. So I'm kind of disappointed they didn't paint them yellow, even though they did go ahead and put a little silver speck here. All right. Um, these white pieces also come undone. Um, they're supposed to come undone. There we go. Uh, these are, I think, uh, a bit inaccurate from what I saw. Uh, they're supposed to both be like yellow, yellow, red onto the right side, but um, it seems to be they did kind of a symmetrical yellow, yellow, red towards the center, but uh, I don't think most people will care. And they also have a specific orientation. They're shaped the same uh, a way that you have to have the angled upside going here. Obviously, the tabs as well will help you with that. But let's do this side as well. All right, close that up. Undo the leg panels and the ankles. So you can get inside here, pull up on this. These are also mirrored. So same pieces, no, no need to worry about that. Just make sure that the tab section is at the bottom. Close that up. Close this up. Same thing on this side. Open this. Undo the ankles. Oh, well, that's gone forever. Tab that in. Tab that closed. All right, so we're almost there. The last, uh, I guess, two plus this one piece. Moving this all to the side. Uh, so this piece... Basically just pegs in. There's a couple tabs and slots here and here. This is very easy. No need to disassemble anything. Just tab those right over, over top. Uh, this is the only part uh, that you cannot have when you're transforming it. So you do need to remove this for alt mode, but all the rest of the pieces can stay on. Uh, really quickly, I actually like probably this, maybe, maybe without the shins. I like all this detail and the red eyes the best. Um, I will probably swap this and the knees out for probably the white shins and the plain chest. But I do like the extra details that the shoulders give, that the knees give, the highlights. It breaks up the, the crazy amount of blue that this figure has. Um, so I do like that. So I'll probably keep mine mostly like this again with these swapped and the chest swapped. All right, let's see if I can actually get this face off in a timely manner um, without going like 10 minutes struggling and wasting time on this um, pretty ins oh there we go all right another question that have I've seen people ask is whether you can actually swap the eyes and have red eyes on the toy head you cannot uh, the way this is molded you can't I even tried it you can remove these screws and uh, pop up the eye pieces but they do not actually fit um I could be lying. I tried the red eyes on the yellow face or the toy face. I didn't actually try the other way around. Um, so that actually might work because this is a smaller piece, but I'm not going to bother testing that at this point. This just tabs in like so. I, and I don't know anybody who would, would want the yellow eyes, these small yellow eyes on this face. 
I could see people wanting red eyes on this face, though. And with that, we have all of his accessories, his toy optional accessories in. I guess to be complete, I should be flipping this piece out, tabbing this in, extending it, and then getting the gun out. But you guys get the idea. That long live stream has finally come to an end. I can probably guess that there are a bunch of questions. Hopefully not. I think I did a very complete live stream review of this guy. Not a lot of mess ups either. So hopefully you guys don't have a ton of questions. I think a lot of you guys probably already have this guy in hand or on the way. Uh, I did actually spend three hours uh, packing up 60 of Toy Dojo's um, Acoustic Waves yesterday instead of doing a live stream yesterday. I did that for you guys so you can get your figure sooner. All right. That's it for the review. What questions do we have? Get them in now before we... Before we... Uh, uh, before we call it a night. Uh, TM says, Pick for Life, take the head off. The mushroom peg first. It's easier. Uh, makes it easier. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I was able to do it just fine. Oh, I didn't transform this guy again and show you the head. But the head just... It, it's just a mushroom peg. You slide it out. You get the idea. I am excited for the other tapes. Well, not the other him because obviously he's the same. But I, I am looking forward to seeing how they did the, the Jaguar and Laserbeak. Or Ravage and Laserbeak if that's what you call them. I am looking forward to seeing if whether they'll do a rat bat as well. Um, but yeah, I, I do like this figure. At a price of $250, um, I think it's probably a little high for what you get. But that's kind of where we've been going with the price of figures. With um, just overall pricing going up with the Masterpiece as well. The COVID stuff, um, fan story stuff has been going up in price. So it kind of makes sense. I just don't think it's $250 worth of stuff. Um, and again, I think a lot of the engineering obviously is very, very much reminiscent of MP13. And I don't know if there's a lot of updates that made me go, wow. Uh, if anything, I thought a lot of the transformations uh, was unnecessary. Oh man, I didn't do this butt flap. A lot of this transformation was uh, unnecessary. And uh, as, I, as I often say, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze for some of the complications that they made um, just to get just a little bit more out of everything. Dang it, I'm not going to be able to get to this without struggling a bit. This tab is a pain in the butt. I don't know why they decided to do it because it's an over tab instead of just a locking tab. So you have to pull up on this and my fingernail is peeling back now because of it. So give me a second. I should have corrected this earlier. Like so. Once again, holding this flap should have been like this. My apologies. Again, I showed this in the beginning, so it shouldn't be a surprise on how to do that. But this is at the actual correct orientation. All right. Uh, MP13 was 220 when it first came out. Uh, that was, yeah, the Japanese one was pretty expensive. And he only came with laser beak. I believe, in the Japanese one. But a bunch of accessories. But the US one was like $120 and came with all four, five tapes? All five tapes. A bunch of more accessories than we, what we have here. The Megatron gun. Um, both uh, both the Rumble pile drivers. The same thing here. We got all four or five cases. Five cases, I guess. No, four cases because Ratbat came with... Um, with the um, Sound Blaster. I think I called him Twin Cast earlier. I don't know why I said, said that. Uh, he also came with that little accessory piece. What else did he come with? So yeah, I mean, if you got the original MP2, I think it was numbered in the US version, um, when it first came out in the US for like 120 or 130 bucks, you got this that figure, this figure, for a, a deal. It was a steal for sure. Uh, how many tapes does RPO1 fit? I think only two. I was only able to get um, 
I was only able to get the official, or I guess the fibber in. I couldn't get the other tape in for some reason. Even though they should be the same size, I wasn't able to get him to fit in. Maybe I can get him to fit in the back. But I think he should be able to fit two. I don't think he'll be able to get three in there. And again, loading him is a little tricky. With the spring-loaded piece in the back, remember to push that side in first. Yeah, this... I think I might damage this if I try to force the other tapes in. So, uh, just be wary about it if you're going to try to do that. And again, I, I think I recommend putting him in this way. It seems to work better than the other way. All right. Uh, let's see. Just going to say hi to a couple of folks that I missed. <laughs> Toy Joe said, man, and that's why Toy Joe Russ was out of business. Uh, let's see. Paul Spurgeon says $150 with yellow eyes. That's actually why the, I have two sound waves. Um, I got this one first, and then I had the, had the yellow eyes, and so I bought... I think from Toy Dojo, this uh, the MP MP13 version, the Japan version, and I gave, I got all the tapes, and I gave um, Laser Beak and um, uh, this sound wave to my son to play with, and that's again that's why he's all scratched off. Megatron, son of a gun! No, T Man, you were outdone by. Um, I think by Paul, he donated five five dollars or something like that. But give me a second, I'll I'll go ahead and bring out Megatron just just for kicks. All right, so go ahead and uh, ask some more questions while I'll be back in about thirty seconds. Well, maybe twenty seconds. Oh man, why am I doing this? Oh no, don't fall, don't fall. Okay. All right, I was able to get him out without making anyone else fall. So there you go, T-Man. Your $2 was well spent. Um, from now on, any requests for comparisons that I didn't bring out will now cost money. So if you really want to see a figure compared, bring out the dough. MMC Ravage. David Goins, I just told you, if you want to see a comparison that I didn't bring out, bring out the money. Minimum $199. Uh, I'll do it for free this time since I didn't, didn't, didn't give you guys a heads up. I don't have any, dif uh, I don't have Deformation Space Starscream yet. Toy Dojo hasn't sent it to me. This comparison is on the house. But $2. I want my two dollars. Oh, I got two dollars. Yeah, got them. Thank you, Ridiculous Badger. And here is your comparison. Oh, give us a secret. Oh, wait, did you not ask? Who's the one that asked for... For a Ravage? That was David. David, you owe me two dollars. All right, Ridiculous Badger, I need to get your secret for you. You didn't specify a modern seeker, so you're getting the old MP11 mold, and you're going to have to live with it. No specification. That means you got uh, Tony, Tony, Tony77, 2077, $5, love you a long time. Uh, yeah, I, I do want, um, all right, what what is Evil Ash? SOC Mazinga, oh my gosh! All right, um, I do have him. Wait, which, which SOC Mazinga? Oh. Okay, well I have two, and again, since you didn't specify, I'm bringing the small one out. This is the, I don't even remember what number he is. Side by side. Oh. All right, fine. Yeah. 
I can't get him side by side. But if you're asking me for the uh, DX SOC, uh, you already got one. Pimpit Bro? What does Pimpit Bro mean? What did what did Princeton ask for? As <laughs> live Unicron, mine's in a box, so that comparison will not work. You guys will not be happy about that one. But thank you, Princeton. Prince is always donating. What 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 comparison do you want? If I have it, I'll I'll try to get it for you. Ridiculous! You sent another two dollars, didn't you? So that's <laughs> Frankie Lawl has actually got my Better Off Dead reference. I love that movie. Come on, Claymation Burgers, John Cusack, Lane Myers. That that was not a very good impression of that guy, but. All right. Do we have any other recommend any other uh, requests? What is wrong with my Jaguar stickers? Uh, they're crappy. Oh, David Goins, he paid up his two dollars. All right, so you got your Jaguar. MG Unleashed Unicorn. Uh, yeah, I can't do that one because well, I can show you a comparison to this box, but I don't have him opened. <laughs> Thanks, David. I do appreciate you actually paying up the two dollars. Yeah, I, I'm gonna quit my job and just do comparison live streams. Random two dollars. Not Oscar Meyer. We're talking about Lane Myers. Lane Myers. A study in moppishness. Uh ridiculous badger asked for a modern seeker as well. Alright, so he did donate twice. Where is he? Alright. I do have Star Scream. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Ugh. All right. Here's any seeker. Oh, uh, and here's another figure that. Uh, I do need to review. They did send me a replacement um, piece for the leg piece that I broke. So I will have to do a live stream on this. I still owe you guys live streams for um, the G2 Bruticus. Um, if you guys probably didn't see, but I did post on TFW 2005. The reason why I'm actually late on that is um, I had a family emergency last week and I was um, in and out of state like four or five times um, last week. Luckily, things are okay, but um, that's why I'm about a week late on a lot of my live streams. Yeah, my basement is already terrible, but actually it's cleaned up a lot. Uh, Bakerton, yeah, I built Gumpla. Yeah, I, um, it's kind of funny. Uh, well, I don't, I build it just like I open Transformers toys. I have more than I have unopened and unbuilt recently than I actually have opened. Um, but kind of cool, my, my nephew, uh, who's 13, recently got into Gumpla. So he and I have been talking a lot. He's been text messaging me. I never text any of my like, little nephews or nieces, but he's been text messaging me a lot about recommendations. We got him a couple of real grades for his birthday last month. So... Uh, Pig, are you from Texas? No, I'm, I'm actually from the East Coast. I grew up in Maryland, and now I'm in Virginia. Lived in the D.C. Um, metro area for all my life, except for about two years when I was in New England. Uh, Mark B. asked, do you have Princeton Wing? No. T uh, Toy Dojo needs to send him to me. I will have him at some point. <laughs> Paul Spurgeon, but back, Gunpla backlogs are real. That is definitely the case. Jermaine said, hell yeah. Uh, Jermaine, I think I sent your, labeled up your uh, acoustic wave, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. I thought I saw that on one of the labels today. Rashawn K. Peters is requesting Transform Element Optimus. Uh, he's in the way back of my cabinet. So unless you're paying $2, you're definitely not getting him. And before you pay, I'll probably sign off so I don't have to do that. <laughs> Two dozen MG and Vercock kits. Uh, yeah, I probably have like a dozen. Uh, I have maybe have like four perfect grades, maybe five perfect grades that I need to do. Probably like five or five or so master grades, a uh, couple of mm, real grades maybe. So I have a lot. 
<laughs> uh, actually, one person had did has asked me for my autograph before, so I forget who it was, but I sold him an old um, MMC figure, and he asked me to autograph the box, and I never autographed anything like as Pig for Life, so I had to come up with a signature just for that, and I signed the the plexi and um, sent it to him. Which is kind of weird because it was a figure that was before I was doing reviews and everything like that. So I had no association with MMC at the time. Uh, if people want autographed boxes, that will be $1 from now on. Collector Express, I live in Virginia uh, as well, just farther west. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm not in West Virginia, but I'm in Western Northern Virginia, I guess. I guess unless you mean Southwest Virginia, which I was down there this other weekend. Is Larkin here? I didn't, I didn't see Larkin. All right, so we're at almost an hour and a half. Uh, a lot of that was actually part of the review and everything. There was a lot to go over with this guy. A lot of stuff as we're seeing down here that we took off and applied and transformation wise. What else is, did you have? This thing, this thing. So hopefully the instructions were helpful even with the detour to light pole mode. Um, but I really enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun. Thanks to the 100 or so people that had joined over the, uh, over the course of the last 90 minutes. Really enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Uh, I'll be back in the later this week. Probably not tomorrow. TM Review usually does a live stream on Wednesdays. And then uh, Figure Action Podcast does one on Thursday. So I usually try not to schedule during that time. But I'll be back with either Locke or the G2 Bruticus um, in the next few days, maybe actually Thursday during the day since it's Veterans Day and I have off that day. So thanks a lot, everyone. Hope you have a great night and uh, keep on transforming. Oh, hit that like button, subscribe, share, uh, hit up that notification bell, all the other thing good YouTubers tell people to do. And I always forget. Thanks a lot. Oh, and always Toy Dojo, my sponsor. If you uh, want to um, pick this guy up, they do have some more in stock that they're slowly getting. So thanks to Toy Dojo for getting this to me as quick as possible.